never been so sure of anything before. Just like I'm in this moment, as was alone would be, you know. Just take my hands and take my ring, as I will always love you through anything I'll do. Took back to the different segment, you know, to the engagement and back to marriage. So we're beginning, you know. Let's talk about love. Let's talk about God. Let's talk about all you need to know before you say I do. Thank you for tuning in to Glorious Vision Television of the Apostolic Church Nigeria. My name is Tokwe Ogini and I want to welcome you to Before You Say I Do. Before You Say I Do is a program we designed for the singles, for those who are in their courtship stage, for those who are engaged, for those who hope to be married someday. As long as you have not said I do, this is a program that you must watch. Here we educate you, we give you information, we enlighten you. We teach you on all what you need to know before saying I do. We prepare and equip you with all what you need to know before getting into marriage. Marriage is a serious matter. And like we always say that marriage is not for boys, it's not for girls. Marriage is for matured men and matured women. On this program, we always like to uh, educate our singles out there so that they can be prepared and know what they are really getting into before saying yes to any proposal or before saying yes i do so we use that by using biblical illustrations and from other experiences those who are experienced we bring counselors we bring uh, mommies and daddies who are already experienced in marriage to come and talk to our singles and how do we do that we have different topics on relationship on marriages because we want you to have a healthy relationship and we want you to have a godly centered relationship that will lead to a godly marriage because that is what we preach we always let you know here that for every divorces that is out there on this program, it can be prevented and it can be avoided before saying I do. Because we give you the truth and all what you need to know to stay in marriage and be married forever. And also to prepare yourself for the everlasting marriage, which is Christ. So, on this note, if this is your first time of tuning in, you have not missed out of anything because we are just about starting. You are welcome on board. And for our regular viewers who are excitedly waiting for this program, we are here again and I know you are there for me. So don't go anywhere. I want to go on this short break. When I return, the program continues and I will be right back. Welcome back. It is still before you say I do on Glorious Vision Television. And this is a relationship program that we designed for every single as long as you have not said that I do. This is a program where we teach you all what you need to know about yourself, your partner, and the marriage that you are about to enter into, about the marital journey that you are about to enter into so that you will not make mistakes and Yours will not be like those who are already married who are saying, had I known all of these things, I would not have done this or I would not have been in this marriage this time around. So that's why we put up a program like this. And like I said before I went to that, we always come with different topics, various relationship and marriage topics for our singles. So today is not an exception from those days. Today again, we have prepared a very beautiful topic again a, a, a contra let me say a controversial topic because a lot of things are attached to this particular topic that we want to talk about and why because we have the worldly view of this topic and we have the godly view of it and that's why i said it's very controversial because a lot of things are but before i do that i just want you to know that i am not alone in the studio for this particular topic i have searched and and I have prayed that God, who can we bring so that uh, can talk to the singles and they will understand. And God has led me to a godly woman who has even written a book on the topic, 
who has written a book on the talk. So I want you to join me as I welcome to the studio. She's a wife, she's a mother, she's a grandmother, and also an author. And she's also the wife of Lona, Deputy Administrative Secretary, and the wife of Olorunda area of the Apostolic Church, Nigeria. She's in the person of Dickness, Gloria Akingbade. Mommy, you are welcome, ma. Thank you, ma. I'm so happy to have you on the show, ma. Thank you. Good day, ma. Yes, ma, you are welcome, ma. So, that is mommy for you. And mommy will be joining me in addressing this topic before us today. And the topic of discussion is we want to look at Christian courtship. Christian courtship. Going into marriage without adequate preparation can be likened to building a house without first sitting down to count the cost. You cannot just go ahead and say you want to start it, but you have to sit down and count the cost. And today we want to look at how important is courtship before marriage. Is it very important? Because some people are of the belief that you don't need to go into courtship. You don't need to know somebody for a long period. You don't even need to study somebody before you marry that person. You can just meet somebody and you, if you like that person, you go ahead. You don't need all of that. When you are in the marriage, you begin to do all the knowing and all the studying. Is it really true? Are you of that mindset? This is what we want to talk about today. We want to look at why courtship before marriage is very very important and it's something that you must always experience before you say i do before you get married so that is what we want to look at today so mommy that's our topic of discussion we want to look at christian courtship now before we start you know i said that there is worldly view of courtship and there's god aspect of it now let's start with what is meant by courtship itself Thank you so much, yes, viewers at home. Good day to you all. When we talk of courtship, it means the time whereby the woman might, might have said yes to the proposal of a brother or a, a man. A man yes, Saying yes to the proposal, then that is when courtship starts. The, you have proposed after knowing the will of God. The will of God should be number one. Knowing the will of God, you are sure you are led to this person and you have talked to the person. After the person might have prayed, the okay. woman might have prayed and has accepted, has given you her voice that, okay, I am convinced also that God is leading us. Okay. Then courtship can now start. Okay. So that's courtship. So what is Christian courtship? Thank you. Is there any difference between the worldly courtship and the Christian courtship? Thank you so much, Ma. When we talk of Christian courtship, Christian courtship is actually different from the worldly view of it. In the world, they call it dating. Okay. Not courtship. Okay. You see boys and girls, even secondary school boys and girls, going about, I love you, I love you. That is lost, and that is dating. You call somebody to come and meet me at Mr. Biggs. Let's go out, let's have lunch together, let's do this. By the time they have lunch together, other things can follow. Okay. You see, that's not the way a Christian will look at it. A Christian will first wait on God. You don't just ask any girl out. Don't just go and jump from one person to the other. No. As a child of God, when you attain, you have to attain the age first. Not for boys or girls in secondary schools and things. As a Christian, when you attain that age, and you wait on God, God, please lead me. You know, Christians, we don't do things just anyhow like that. God, lead me. And after God might have led you, you know you have prayed well and you are convinced, then the next stage is going to the person that the Lord is leading you to. Talking to the person and giving her time to also pray about it. You don't jump on her. You don't insist. You don't force her. But the, the worldly people, they will just say, let's go out. Let's go to Mr. Biggs. 
meet me at this place, meet me at that place, and especially on uh, Lover's Day. When they call it Lover's Day, February 13 or whatever. When they go about, you see, this will lead to some other things. And their own doesn't necessarily, they don't have marriage in view. Mm. They don't mm. have marriage okay. in view. They don't have marriage mm. in view. So okay. that one is dating. It's not courtship. Okay. So now, what are the stages of courtship? Thank you. When we talk of stages, like I told you earlier, mm. yes. the worldly people, when they all talk of their own stages, they talk of the initial meeting at the lady, at the meeting, the lady, setting their eyes on the lady, then uh, getting the, the, the interest in the lady. After having interest in the lady, then uh, the, the enlightenment, going to meet the lady, and then the proposal or whatever the engagement. That is worldly set of stages. The stage for a child of God, stages in courtship starts with knowing the will of God. When you know the will of God and you are sure, you are freely prayed about it. Don't just take things for granted. Mm -hmm. You pray about it. Pray well. And when I'm talking about praying well, I know what I'm saying. You know, there are some people that are in the church, but they are not really children of God. Yes. They are not really children of mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. They are in the church. Mm -hmm. And they pretend Especially when they set their eyes on one girl or the other, one lady, the choir or the other, they will it's now talented. calm down mm -hmm. and they want to behave like a choir, a child of God. That can be dangerous. So when we are talking of Christian courtship, the stages, a child of God that has given his or her life to Christ, now you are sure you are a child of God, God is your father, you have surrendered unto him, good, then you now pray unto God, lead me. After God, that's the second stage. After God but have led you, now you propose. Okay. When you now propose, the third stage, stage then okay. the courtship can now start. Okay, thank you, ma. So how important is this courtship before marriage? Thank you, ma. Courtship is actually important. It is important because, you know, Two people coming together, even twins. Mm. I have twins. Okay, ma. Their behavior is not, not the same at all. Mm. Taiwan and Ken, they cannot behave the same way. Now, when two people are coming into marriage, they will need to study one another. After the acceptance, then the time to pray together, time to plan, time mm. to study one another mm. starts. So courtship is actually important because, you know, somebody that you do not know, you mm. only meet the mm. person maybe in church, mm. in convention, in mm. fellowship. Mm. Mm. It may not be the place, your base. It may be another town entirely. And, uh, you know, when you now start to court, the courtship will be important because you will need to know the behavior of that person. You need to know the strength of the person. You, know, you need to know mm. how committed that person is. It's mm. not everybody that you see in the church that are really committed. You need to build him mm. or her up. Mm. Okay. You need to plan well, mm. pray well, mm. and know what the Lord has for you in mm. future. Mm. That is the importance of courtship. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Now, this courtship of a thing. You just said something. Now, you said... A lot of people are in the churches that they are not even children of God and they pretend to be. So, in courtship, um, I, I want to ask, in courtship, okay, I, let me use the example of people who are married. I have people who are married who, when they start having issues in their mind and you ask them, I didn't two people courted before marriage. They will tell you that, yes, now we did now. So how come you didn't realize this person is like this? And they will say, we did. So, what could be wrong? Thank you. Viewers That's why studying, saying that you have studied and studied, what could be? Viewers at home, like I said earlier, mm -hmm. some people pretend to be what they are not. And you know the level of pretense, because of the, the, the type of mm. the person, okay? the person is, mm. you, you, when you are cutting, you know they are, there are limitations. Okay. Because of the limitations, 
you are no, you are not staying on the, under the same roof. Yes, ma'am. You true. you may not you may not uh, really know him or mm -hmm. her much. Mm -hmm. As a result of this, mm. it's not all about the person that you will get to know. Mm, that's the thing. You can't get to know everything about the person you are getting married to. Mm. You are cutting. Yes, ma'am. You know there are some things that will still be hidden. Yes. That is why. That is why it is important to pray and pray well. Even if the person is pretending, the person is trying to, to cover up some aspects mm. that he or, he or she may not want you to know. Okay, ma'am. <laughs> if you are a child of God, mm. Holy Spirit filled, mm. the Spirit okay. of God can reveal to you. Okay. okay. And you can confront him or her. Okay. The Lord is telling me this about good. you. Good. Good. That's good. You've cleared that. So... Now, what are the things to look? How long does courtship last? How long should it be? Some people will say three months is okay. How long should it be or should it last? If you are going to be in the courtship before the marriage, before the wedding day. Actually, it depends. Okay. It depends. But the bottom line is that it must not be too short and it must not be too long. Okay. We have okay. We have some denomination that will not want okay. courtship to be more than six months. Okay. They know what they are saying. Okay. Because when the courtship is too mm. long, okay. temptations can set in. Okay. Because we do not want people that are cutting are not married. Yes. And because they are not married, there is still the limitation. Mm. So if it's too long, and they spend too much time together, mm. temptations can set in. Okay. But at the same time, mm. it must not be too short. Okay. I want to submit that three months is too short. Okay. It is too short. Okay. Yes. So for courtship, between six months, it can even be up to two years. Mm. Yes. Before the be. marriage. It can. Would that not be the two years? But I was thinking you are going to say like maximum of a year. Without two I know. years. My marriage is not something that we just jump into. You have to plan and plan well. You have to plan and plan well. Okay. I got engaged in the year 1985, and we got married April 1987. Mm, that's two years. Two years. Because it was not up to a few months to two years. Okay. But, you know, you have to plan. Mm. Marriage, so they shouldn't you, you need, be in you your need own. planning. So you need planning so that you will not start and uh, you will now be running back to back. your pastor, mm. running back to your dad or your mm. mom. Marriage mm. is not meant for that. Mm. When, before you get into it, you have to plan and pray and plan and pray and plan. So what you are telling us, man, is that even after the proposal, it should, they should not rush anything. They should, they should still take time to get to know. Take time. Yes. Proposal does not mean that, oh, marriage should happen fast. No, 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 no. no. It doesn't have to. It doesn't have to. There must be planning. And uh, one, we need to listen to what God is saying. Mm. God may tell you, you know, there are some people that say, God says, this courtship should not be too long. Okay, ma. That is the voice. Of, if you are sure you are hearing from God, mm. then go ahead. Okay. The Spirit of God will always lead you. Mm. We always direct you. Mm. We always take charge and take the lead. Mm. But when you are sure you are hearing from God, good. God can tell you the limits, thank but you. it must not be more than two years. Two years. Okay, thank you, ma'am. So, what are the things to look out for in courtship? To the Christians, yes. like I told you, Christian courtship is not dating. Mm. The things to look out for is to get to know that person more. Know what God has in plan for you. Like when you are cutting, you have made this, the, the, you have said yes to a proposal, the man and the woman coming together. God has some things in store for them. You pray about it, know this plan. The home that is about to start, mm. what, mm. God does, mm. what do, does God want the home to be like? Mm. What are the things that God will want us to do? Where do God want us to live? Mm. Where do we where do we where do we work? What mm. plans do we have for the future? Mm. These are the things that we talk about, and uh, you try as much as possible to emphasize 
the aspect of prayer. Because when you pray, when you are in the spirit and you pray in the spirit at all times, mm. the spirit of God will be revealing so many things to you. Okay, ma. You know, marriage is not always a bed of roses. Yes, ma'am. There are some things that God will reveal to you mm. and God will tell you how to go about, about exactly. it. What are the things you need to mm. do? Mm. What are the plans you need to take? Mm. What are the steps you need to take? Because you have proposed and because the person has said yes mm. may not necessarily mean that the family will agree. Mm. Mm. The term of courtship, those that may not want to, you know, you will need to meet the two sides. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Some people may say, what? After this and this and this, who is this person that you are bringing and this? This is the time you need to really deal with mm. such aspects. Mm. Deal with it so that in marriage, mm. you will not now start running from pillar to post. Thank you, ma'am. Now, in many Christian relationships and courtships, many people go too far and do things that are not godly and acceptable by scriptural standards, like I said before. Because some people feel because he has proposed to me, that automatically makes us become husband and wife even though we have not done all we are supposed to do. So they start doing some things that they are not supposed to do, like uh, like uh, hugging, and like saying that, because I've had somebody ask me, is kissing in courtship a sin? Is yes. hugging a sin? So how far is too far when you are in courtship? Marriage, wedding has not taken place. So how far? What should be the limit? Thank you. When you are cutting, you are not married. And during courtship, there should be limitation. You know, we are getting to the age whereby there is mm. civilization, yes. the social media, so many things are happening now. Mm. Mm. It wasn't like that in the time past. In time past, you don't, sisters and brothers don't go out together. In fact, they don't see you together. Even when you are cutting, people know you are cutting. That's not the, uh, the, 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 the license for you to mm. be going out, holding mm. hands, and mm. be going on the streets. Mm. In those times, earlier, late uh, 90s, 20th mm. century, 20th people, century. Pe people are not always seen together like that. But it's because of the age we are in. But even in the age we are in, we still need to set limitations. Hugging, kissing can lead to what you are not expecting. So for Christians, mm. I will say it is not acceptable. Then going and spending weekend washing clothes and things, there was the issue of, of a lady. Because they were on the campus together and the, 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 the man said, the Lord is leading him to you. She accepted I believe she prayed anyway before she accepted. Okay. Because they were together on the camp in the school. That school, there was no hostel accommodation. People take accommodation outside. Do you know that they start living together? Mm. This, this, this lady mm. will go, we go to the place, collect money, go to the market, buy, buy food stores, prepare food. Pack his clothes and wash. When you are not married. Wifey, wifey rules. Wifey rules. When they are not married. During courtship. Mm. One day, before you know it, the, the, the person ends and says, oh, she be, we, are, we are going to get, get married. married. We are going to get that's married. We are going to marry. Before you know it, the unexpected happened. The lady started regretting it. The Bible tells us marriage must be honorable. honorable. Because adulterers and adulterers, God will judge. God will judge. So courtship is not a time that you'll be going to your, 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 the, the house of the brother, you'll be washing clothes, you'll be going out together, you'll be going to, 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 to park together. at late night. Visiting late night and saying, no, it's too late, I can't go back home. Let me just stay. Maybe you have two rooms. You stay in one and I'll stay in the other. No, you don't do it. You don't do it. Christians must not engage in such things. The Bible tells us that we must flee all appearances of evil. Even if you say you are strong, you know yourself that you are a child of God, nothing can happen. What are people that will be seeing you? Mm. They may not know that nothing is happening. 
you are you are going to become stumbling blocks to those that are looking at you, to those that are watching you. This is a big brother, it's big sister, good. Mm. You know yourself, you are sure of yourself. But what are those that are watching you? When they see you, they won't know. That means you will be stumbling blocks unto them. And then the Bible tells us that those that are stumbling blocks, it's better that millstone be tied around <laughs> their neck and they be dropped in the mm. sea. Our mm. head cannot contain the judgment of God. Thank you, Matt. So, now, um, does courtship always lead to marriage? Every courtship, once you are in that, once, because ev everybody believes that once you are in courtship, they know that it's, it, you are talking about marriage. You are talking about marriage. So, does all courtship lead to marriage? Not all courtship leads so to marriage. So, even at courtship stage, it can still be It can still be. Yes, it can still be. Not all courtship leads to marriage and uh, we have seen cases whereby after you know like i told you not everybody in the church is a child of god yes, some people pretend so that at least they can get what they want and then uh, there are some sisters that may also fall into it mm -hmm. and accept but if that person we not relax, we not relent, we not just put out the two hands that thank God I've gotten somebody. Mm. You still continue to pray, mm. and the Lord is revealing some things to you about that person. You can still call it quits. A broken engagement is better than a broken mm. marriage. We have so many issues now that people, after getting married, three months, mm. six yes. months, all sorts of things start to happen. You now start to wonder. What type of courtship did they engage themselves in? You don't pity, you don't pity. Yes, you don't pity somebody that because, oh, if I leave him mm. or her now, mm. hey, what will people say? See, it is your life. You don't pity him or her. Make sure only in the will of God. When you know your, it is really the will of God, mm. and if after a saying yes, God is now revealing some other things. Mm. The, the, you are now seeing other side of the person. Mm. You are now seeing some things. There was the case of a, person, of a couple. They got married. And after a few weeks, was it a few weeks or a few days, the man now discovered that the lady has a horn mm. about two inches mm. on her head. Edge. Horn, mm. like that of a cow. Mm. You know, Christians, we tie our staff and do all things. Yes. But if during the courtship, maybe she's, he has got into the, the house and saw the staff off, mm. and then maybe un unannounced, you just got into the house. house. And mm. Will you now ask him or her to make sure you go ahead? Mm. So when there, is, there, are, there are some issues, and it is discovered that mm. this courtship cannot lead mm. to marriage. Mm. It is still better to break up than to now pity, oh, what will people say and things, and go into marriage and later have issues. Thank you, man. Later have that. issues. Um, I'm sure that our singles who are watching, they are, they are really being blessed by all this exposition about Christian courtship. On that so that you will not have regrets. We want to go on another short break. When we come back, the program continues. Please don't go anywhere.
Welcome back. The program is still before you say I do on glorious vision television. The only relationship designed, the only relationship program designed for singles who have not said I do. And on today's program, we have been looking at Christian courtship. What it means. What is the difference between the courtship of the world and the godly courtship? What are those things that you as a single and as a Christian out there supposed to know that there have been so many misconceptions about this courtship? And that's why we have brought a topic like this. And I know that those of you who are watching us before we went to a break, you are enjoying yourself and you are being blessed by all this exposition. And it is really interesting. And I still have with me in the house, Mommy, Dickness, Gloria, her King Bade, who has been doing justice and giving insight into this topic. So, Ma, before we went to that, I was saying that those, and you've, you've really thought so much about that. Now, how is courtship, although you've said so much about it, you know, how is courtship different from dating? And you, you said people of the world normally use dating, dating, dating. Thank you, Ma. Courtship is actually different from dating. In the first instance, courtship starts after knowing the will of God and proposing. But dating is just that you just see somebody on the highway mm. or maybe a colleague at work or a friend from school that you have seen a long time ago. Maybe you went to secondary school together, just saw the person, wow, how, how are you? Hello, hi, can we meet? Can we have a date and go on a date together? It can be to anywhere. After the date, eating, drinking, we have cases whereby people are invited dating and the man has prepared drugs, drugs. to put into the drink of the lady. Our sisters, I pray that the Lord will help you in the Amen. mighty name of Jesus. Amen. A bottle of Coke and meat pie mm. will not ruin your future, will not ruin your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. So dating <laughs> is such that, you know, the, uh, the worldly people just use it. Just go and they know that when they go on dates, they will be hugging, they will be kissing, and it can lead to what you do not expect, especially when the lady is being hypnotized and they're being drugged. Mm can lead to anything but it's courtship courtship we not go to the extent of going to to a place or whatever and doing all sorts of nonsense courtship is for a christian brother and a christian sister after knowing the will of god after hearing from god mm. you know i've be, always been telling people that i have opportunity to witness or minister to that when it comes to the issue of marriage, cannot be something different. You know how God has been talking to you. Mm. You have been hearing from God, and the case of a marriage cannot be a different issue entirely. Mm. You will know from God, and you will have that peace. Mm. The mm. peace will be there that this is what God has said, and you have that peace in you. Then, by that, you have proposed. And when the lady, after praying, you don't trust the lady, you allow her. Mm. To have our own time because God has spoken to you, even if you are a big brother or whatever in the fellowship, you will still allow her mm. to pray mm. and be sure that God is leading her. It is then that courtship can start, and it's quite different from dating. Thank you, ma'am. So, what how does this courtship affect marriage? If you don't go into um, courtship before marriage, what effect does it have on the future marriage? If if you don't go into courtship... Like those who see themselves on a day, aside from those, like you keep saying, like aside from those who hear from God, that God says, this, because I've had people who say, I just saw her and God said, this is my wife, and so and that be it. I don't know, Mao, mm -hmm. But I'm just asking, if you do not court before marriage, what effect does it have on the future marriage? Thank you, Ma. Even if God just tells you that this is your wife, you just saw and that God dropped it to your spirit that this person is going to be your wife, courtship is still important. There are so many things that you need to do during courtship that you cannot overlook. In the first instance, people, two people that are just coming together, they will need to know the other person very well. And when I mean know, I mean understand the person very well. Like, you know the town the person is from, you know his or her background, and uh, you take your time to plan 
like you said at the beginning of this program, if you want to build a house and you do not plan, you do not know the, the, the number of things you will need, it mm. can get to a place that you will get mm. stuck. Mm. So the time of courtship is the time of planning. Planning for the future. You plan your life. You plan your time. You plan your the, 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 the marriage. It's not just something that you can just jump in and jump out. It's till death do us part. Yes. And because of this, you have to have time to plan. So courtship is actually important. It is important. You cannot over, even if it's for six months, you have to. It's not possible you just see somebody. I just feel that this person, the Lord is leading me to you. And you approach that person, and even that person did, did not say take time much, like a, a week or so. Ah, yes, and the next month you just go into marriage. No, how do you how do you plan? Mm. How you need to know some things that you will need to encounter. You need to plan your life. How the, the family is going to be like, so that there will not be crisis later on. So, what are the benefits for those who will be having courtship before marriage? What do they stand to enjoy they by having it? When you have courtship before marriage, you stand, you stand to gain peace, mm. love, joy, and happiness. Because you would have known some things about the person you are going into with. You would have planned your life. You would have been able to agree on some things. Like the time of courtship, you know, you, I keep on emphasizing the issue of prayer. When you pray, God will lead you. When you pray, God will lead you. You even fast together. You read novels together. You know, this time that we have novels on our phones, mm -hmm. you can plan the ones you want to read. You can take a, you make a, 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 day, a day of the week, a day that you'll be praying and fasting, even if you are not in the same time. He will be fasting and praying there. You will be fasting and praying there. Then when you pray, God will lead you. God will tell you some things that you will discuss together. Mm -hmm. By this, the home that you will be having in future. So many things. I, I heard of a lady that during their courtship, in fact, before she, she started, uh, before she was engaged, the doctors told her that she would not have an issue. Mm -hmm. And this lady during the courtship time, when the man proposed, the two of them know that this is what the doctor is saying, but they decided to pray about it. They prayed, and God said, you are going to have children. Yeah. And the, mm. God gave them the names mm. of the children that they are going to have. Mm. So when you have time to pray, mm. you have so many things to gain. Mm. The Lord will be leading you. Mm. And the Bible says we should commit our ways unto the mm. Lord. Mm. He will lead us. Yes. When mm. God is leading you, mm. you have the joy, you have the peace, you have the hope, you have the... Even when, let all others, everybody be saying one thing or the other, you are determined, you, you will focus. Mm. You will be focused because mm. you are really taking the foundation together mm. and the Lord is really leading you. Okay, ma. So what are the things to discuss? Because I'm sure like the dating now, they discuss all sorts of ungodly things. Mm. But now in courtship, there are some... People who don't have asked, have asked a situation where some singles ask me this question, Ma, we are in courtship. What are we supposed to be talking about? Some don't know what they are supposed to be doing in their courtship. Even though they may not commit, they may not be committing sin. But what is it? Yes, they are supposed to, that is when they're supposed to get to know each other. Because what are they supposed to be talking about? Thank you. The things that they need to get to know about each other. First, they will know the type of person this person is. The level of Christian. You know, we are not on the same level as Christians. Yes. The weakness of the person. Maybe this is somebody that cannot, when you say, okay, bros, let's fast today. This is somebody that by 12... He will be hungry and be saying, ah, Sister, I'm sorry, I have to eat. You will know this type of person and you will know how to handle, handle him. Then another thing is that you will get to know the family you are going into. You can discuss, how is your dad? 
how is your mom what type of thing do you think what type of uh, thing maybe like uh, what our home should be like mm. what do we have in future what plan can can we what what can we plan for the children that we'll be having in future mm. like maybe you are into evangelism you love evangelism or you want to say, the sister may want to say, okay, I love to be in CEU. The brother may say, okay, I love to teach in Sunday school. You will know how to, you know, it's iron that sharpens iron. Mm. You start to discuss. It's not when you get home and the person is now saying, you cannot go for CEU. That's okay. Sunday school class. You cannot go again. Mm. That's the mm. case of a man that will not allow the wife to go for Sunday school. That one we attend Sunday school class. Sunday morning, say, don't go, I want to eat pounded yam. Mm. You know, if during courtship, they would have discussed, mm. I'm interested in seeing you, you are interested in choir, how do we balance it? Mm. Our home, what do we like our home to be like? How many children do we plan to have? Mm. God helping us, what type of school do we want to spend, send our children to? Mm. And the, 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 the marriage that we are preparing for, what type of marriage do we want to have? You know, we don't build a fantasy. Oh, mm. that type of mm. wedding that mm. that person has, mm. that the, the, the whole world, mm. they had everything, they, this and they know. You will need to cut your coats according to the size of your clothes. Okay. You will discuss. When do we plan our marriage? Mm. What exactly do we want to do? Where do we spend our honeymoon? Mm. Where do we live? Okay. I am living here, you are living there. Where oh. do we settle? Okay. We have to settle. What job to take up? Mm. As a woman, what job do I take so that the home mm. can, they, they, maybe the man will say, no, I don't want you to work throughout the time that you'll be having children, you'll be mm. to, you mm. will have to be at home mm. full-time housewife so that there will not be quarrels mm. after. Mm. We will mm. discuss and settle all this. Mm. But the spiritual aspect must be of paramount importance. It must not be left aside. Thank you, Ma. So now, um, what are courtship? What are the courtship rules? Does courtship have any rules? Like these are what you should do and not do in your courtship. Yes, it has. It has rules. First, you don't allow yourself to be under the same roof without anybody there. You know those times when you are visiting, you take somebody along. So you don't just stay behind closed doors and think that something cannot happen. Like I said, even if you are sure something cannot happen, you will become stumbling blocks to those that are seeing you. Okay. Then you don't get too, too engaged to the fact that you will now go there in the hours of the night and you will sleep over. Okay. Because she doesn't mean you will go to his house as a woman, go to the market, buy food and be cooking. Because she doesn't mean that you will pack his clothes and go and be washing. No. Mm. There must be limitations. Mm. You don't visit at night. You don't do things that are not edifying. You know, the Bible says all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. You have to be careful. You have to be watchful. You have to... Know the fact that people that are around are watching you. All eyes, especially when people know that you are caught, all eyes will be on you. Mm -hmm. The younger ones will be looking at you. So there must be limitation. There must be limitation. Going out together mm -hmm. when, during the day, at least you will need to meet and discuss. Maybe we need to pray and discuss. It may be anywhere, but not under closed doors so that you cannot be tempted. The Bible says, flee all youthful lust. And the Bible also tells us that marriage is honorable among all men. Adulterers and adulteresses, God will judge. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma. So now, in summary now, courtship is courtship. Courtship is not marriage. not marriage. So you should not take courtship to be marriage and you begin to play the wifey role, playing the husband role that you are already married to that person. No, yeah. it is still courtship. It is until after the wedding yes. that you can begin to do all of that because there are so many things that people normally do while in their courtship because to them, 
courtship means that we are married already. No. After at this stage now, it is marriage. No. So because of that, they start doing so many, playing so many wife roles, so playing so many husband roles, which they don't know that all these things are not are not acceptable at all. Okay, now what um what in courtship people always have this kind of mindset that the courtship of the world and the courtship the christian courtship to them is too the rules are just too much mm -hmm. they want to be free what do you have to say to the youth even from christians feel that ah, it shouldn't be after all god has spoken to me they want to be free if it is possible thank you even when we are engaged, you are cutting, you still need to be careful and be watchful. Like we said, courtship doesn't mean that you are married. Especially to those that have unbelieving parents. You know those that have unbelieving parents, you are believers, mm, mm. and your parents may be pushing you, mm. ah, you have to pregnant, you make okay. sure that this girl is pregnant too. Mm. Because this type of culture, this type of wedding that you are going to do, that everybody will see, I don't want a situation whereby she will not be pregnant later on. It mm -hmm. happened to me. My father-in-law was telling my husband that make sure you pregnate this lady. <laughs> but my, 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 husband told, my husband told him that we are Christians. We can't do that. Okay. I said, there are type of wedding. You want to call everybody to come for your wedding? My husband told him that we are Christians. And by the special grace of God, the Lord is going to do it. Nine months after our wedding, you will come and rejoice with us. And that was exactly what Hallelujah. happened to the glory of God. So you don't allow people around to push you. You don't say because you are cutting, that means maybe you are going to get married. And do you know that in the world today, people of the world know how to take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. They deceive themselves a lot in the world. And this is coming into the church. Mm. And you will see some people that they will be saying they are cutting mm. and they will be going about messing about. Say, as, as long as we are not pregnant, as, as long as they say, let us go and do the pregnancy test a day before our wedding and it's negative. So anything can happen. Even if you don't get pregnant and you go about messing up, God has ways of dealing with such issues mm. because the Bible tells us that mm. Even if hands be joined together, sinners will never go unpunished. God have different types of kings to use on youths. So, because you are getting married, you know you are getting married. Like we said, courtship can still break. Mm. Now, if you have messed yourself mm. and the courtship now it break, breaks. how do you? What do you do? How do you? How do you now go about mm. it? So, please, because you are getting married, because you are engaged, does not mean. You get involved in things that are not edifying. You get involved and make sure you now, tell, you now say we are getting married, nothing can happen. They pretend you do whatever you like. You tell the pastors you, 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 you think you are too smart. You don't behave as if you are too smart. God is over there and is watching you. I pray that the Lord will help you to make up your mind, to be determined that as a child of God, you will keep yourself pure. You will live a holy life, even during courtship. Amen. May the Lord help us all. Thank you, ma. We on this program we normally recommend books for our singles, and I've chosen to use your book to recommend your book. This is Heaven on Earth. I recommended book for this uh, particular episode is Heaven on Earth. Do you want to enjoy marital relationship to the fullest? So as many of you that you desire to enjoy this marital relationship to, to the fullest, that's how she puts it. This book is written by my guest, Mommy Dickness, Gloria Akimbadi. She is the author of this book. So, and so many things, what she has been discussing here is part of what she has written down in this book. So try and get a copy of Heaven on Earth. Is it on internet, mommy? It is. It is. So if anybody wants to get a copy of this book, how would they yeah. get it? For those, because I have viewers who are outside, outside. Lagos. Outside. Yes. I will give my email. Okay. When they oh, get okay. my email, we can. Okay. So inside the book, we have Edwin on Health. Then you want to know more about your will or God's will. Is it your own will 
or God's will that is pushing you into that relationship or to that uh, marriage, you need to know. Then the Christian courtship that we just talked about, you want to read more on it. She has it here as a, as a chapter. Then the wedding. So many of you too, you want to know about how to go about your wedding. What are you supposed to do? What are the processes? Is another chapter. Then God as the head of the home. Love, the important pillar in the home. You want to know the difference between the true love and the fake love that is out, outside there. Duties of the husband and father. Many of you singles, men that you are out there that you just want to get married because people are getting married. What are, what are your duties? By now that you are single, you're supposed to know what are the duties that you'll be performing after marriage. Maybe you don't know. What are the duties of the wife? They're now to raise godly children. The duties of your children to you. Responsibility of parents and children to God. And lastly, only marital challenges, the godly way. Definitely, there are going to be challenges. Everybody has it. But if you don't know how to undo your own, it can break your marriage. So you must try and get a copy of this book, Heaven on Earth, Enjoying Marital Relationship to the Fullest, by, written by Gloria O. Akingbadi. Okay. And uh, the book is available all over Nigeria, even outside. Okay. Okay. Some copies are in uh, Johannesburg already. Okay, that's also, good. Also, um, if you go to our bookshop at uh, Olanda, you'll get a copy. And uh, if you give a call, give a call or send email, we know how to get it across to you. God bless you. Yeah, thank you so much. And you can call me in case you need a copy of this. You can ask. Mommy, thank you so much. Thank you for your biblical insight and your experience into this topic. We have really been blessed. And I'm sure my singles out there have been really blessed too. Thank you. This is how far we can go on today's episode of Before You Say I Do. I know, Mom, if we call you, you will come again. Yes. Like we always do on this program, we always ask our guests to pray. Pray for as many that are in their courtship stage or that will be going into it. I want you to pray for them. Father, in Jesus' name. We worship and adore you for this opportunity, O oh Lord. I commit the singles that are outside there unto your hands, O oh Lord. Those that are not yet sure of your will for their lives, I pray you will lead and direct them in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I pray that they will not make mistakes in choosing in the name of Jesus. Amen. As many as are in relationship, Father, the grace for them to keep themselves pure so that the period of their courtship, they will move in a godly way. And this will end into a godly marriage. Father, do so and take the glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Pray, O oh Lord God Almighty, that you will lead every one of these, your people that are listening unto us, and they will not make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Because our head cannot contain your judgment, Lord Jesus. Many, maybe, maybe there are some people that are in the wrong relationship already, Lord, I pray yes, that Lord. you will do all in your power, O oh Lord, to get them settled in the name of Jesus. Amen. All our viewers, I pray that your marriages will be a heaven on earth, and you will enjoy marital bliss in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will have a godly home. Amen. You will have godly children, Amen. and it shall be well with you. Amen. GBTV will continue to move forward Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jehovah Lord. In Jesus' unfailing name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much Amen. once again, Mommy. Thank God you for coming, you. and thank you for these great contributions to the life of singles. I know you have been blessed today. If you, this is how far we can go on to this episode of Before You Say I Do. If you have any question on this topic or a previous topic, please don't hesitate to drop it on that WhatsApp number that is scrolling on your screen. And you can also watch the repeat broadcast of this episode on Saturday at 1 p.m. Also, you can join us on Tuesday, same time at 8 p.m. to watch this episode of Before You Say I Do. We want to thank you for always being there for us. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for being good viewers. And for those who just joined today, welcome on board. This is what we do and we always come on every week. Until I come your way again on another exciting episode of Before You Say I Do. I remain your host, Tokwe Ogini. Don't forget on Before You Say I Do, we help you to take the right decision before saying I do and bye for now. I've never been so sure anything before Just like I'm in this moment I was alone would be enough
Just take my hands and take my ring Cause I will always love you Through anything I'll do The two bad boys the first segment You know, only you know, engage in a yeah, maximum yeah, rate So where I'm getting, you know Let's talk about love Let's talk about God 